Why don't you have a blurb back here? This is you good. Let's read can't, the back of a book. You can't, you can't give back to the community by giving to your fellow authors a I'm little a, something? Warren and I blurbed 16 books last year, including uh, neo-lesbian western gothic. So. <laughs> Did you? What did you say about yeah, that? No, I didn't really. That <laughs> didn't. I would. You <laughs> so really, what should kids be reading, though? If you, if um, you could change the curriculum right now. Because it's not I that I want to change the curriculum. I just think we can m move some more relevant stuff in it. I mean, but, you know, if people think the novel is dead, maybe that's because, you know, kids are still reading novels that are 60 years old. Well, they're not reading I mean, those, trust me. What's that? They're not reading Well, they're reading the Cliff's Notes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I mentioned a few books that I love that have come out in the past, you know, 10 or 15 years that, that, that I mean, or a book like Middle Passage by uh, Charles Johnson, although the end just, I don't know what happened there. I felt like the wheels fell off. But my God, in the middle of that book, I was going, this is the most brilliant book I ever read. And, you know, it's about a, it, it's about a slave ship. It's, a, it's about a slave ship. It's about, I mean, it's totally relevant to, mm -hmm. to, to, to a current modern-day curriculum, but nobody's reading it because books don't have money to order you know, you know, we still get, you know, it's like, oh, look, a Mice and Men. <laughs> you know, we still got 40 copies of this because we couldn't pass a school levy and, you know. God, just, <laughs> maybe, maybe the problem, though, is like you got to get Why did you have me back? What? <laughs> because I like you and I, I feel pity. <laughs> your, your last gig was opening for Walter Mondale, for goodness sakes. Yeah, Fritz. Oh, no, he opened Fritz. for you. you yeah. He opened for you. No, I, I actually, it. he went after. He did? There was, ah, there was a little mix-up there. It was a little yeah, <laughs> I had to get Molly on the phone. You did. Yeah. Did you get Again. pissed off? Again. <laughs> like earlier today, I said bass. That, That's a Stella. I'm yeah. Sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Will? No, Will? he asked. I just didn't want to make him feel bad. I thought I'd rather make you feel bad about this. Thank you so much. Like thank you for saving that on air. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Good. You know, I know it'll be cut. <laughs> <laughs> but why can't we get what why you know why can't we get the good stuff on the bestseller list? Um, we why can. aren't people reading it? We can. I we mean, can? The freedom's selling more books than any book in America. Why do right I have now? to look at Mitch Album on the bestseller list? I don't want to say anything bad about Mitch Album. I want to. Okay, <laughs> so. go. I'll just nod. <laughs> He's a simple-minded. guy sold like fifty. For God's he sakes. sold fifty million books. Oh, for I mean, not that I care. I mean, I don't. That's not his fault. You know, he writes what he writes, and people buy it. You can't. Right. I can't begrudge. Isn't the there guy supposed to be a filter, There's like in a publisher, that says no? We don't need that drivel. Well, then, I mean, somebody's doing their job. If a guy's selling fifteen million books, I mean, what, I, I, what are you gonna? You know, what are you gonna say about that? I mean, publishers are about bottom line ultimately. You know, right. I mean, they got to survive. Right. Even a small press has got to sell books. But you know. Uh, I like mostly British ales. Uh, something with malted hops. I don't like stuff that's too hoppy. Not too I don't like hoppy, too hoppy. No. I like a lot of body. I like right. a cream ale, sometimes a cream stout. Uh, lagers on a hot day. Does that answer your question? Mm. Okay. It certainly does. This Cure Royale is awfully nice, but I prefer Fran Wall. I'd go, in, I'd go into cease. diabetic shock if I had one of those. <laughs> Sometimes it's like a Bartles and James. Seriously, there has to be hope for the world. You mentioned, who are you staring at? I don't know. <laughs> Somebody told me once you're supposed to make eye contact with the camera at some point, and I don't think I have you. Really? Oh. Yeah. Well, I've been so that's conversational. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Let's talk Along about this here, small... Your shoulders uh, need to be squared oh, off. Thank you. Oh, for God's sakes, I'm not William Hurt. <laughs> I am Albert Brooks. That's <laughs> okay. the way it goes. And yeah. you're Holly Hunter you, in this you equation. Were born, <laughs> you were born to be a host, my friend. And yeah. sweaty. Can we hear that theme song? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you like that? It's way you? better than Charlie Rose. I'll say that. Thank no you offense, so Charlie. much. Oh no, offense Shock. to you too, Charlie Rose. Shock. Now let's talk about the the small independent presses because that, that's really an uphill battle, isn't it? Yes, but I think it's becoming less of an uphill battle mm -hmm. because the corporate publishers are running themselves into the ground. Right. Um, I, I I find lots of reasons to hope for small presses. Not only the editorial voices of a lot of small presses. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, incredible better than anything out there um but they're better at sorting out their own demand um, they're better at uh locating their own audience and trying to connect people one book at a time which is how you do it you mm -hmm. can't just you, you, you know you you can't you can't be a tastemaker in literature like you used to be you can't just shove it down the throat hollywood's still good at it but you know the, the market in hollywood is it's not 10 times bigger it's not a thousand times bigger it's like a hundred thousand times bigger. So you know, uh, you can you can get the gears of the publicity machine working in Hollywood and, and shove something down people's throats and and essentially guarantee yourself twelve million dollars in the first week in the box office. Probably it's a little harder to do that in literature. Right. I mean, it took a concerted effort on it. everybody's part. You know, I mean, you know, Freedom is doing great right now. Jonathan Franzen is s selling like gangbusters. It helps that the corrections sold a lot. 
It helps at Time Magazine. But it took a concerted effort from, and I think it's good for literature. No matter what anybody thinks of the book, and the book has been very divisive. But I mean, I think it's just excellent for literary fiction. Uh, fiction. It's uh, it's exciting to me that there's hundreds of thousands of people out there all reading the same novel, and and, and it's a you know it's a thought provo provoking, really well written novel. Right. That also had Oprah behind it. Do we sure. just need more? Well, Oprah's? that's what I'm saying. That's what it takes. Yeah. Well, you know, I think I think that Oprah. It's, that's an interesting point. I think that the book Oprah's book club disappearing is really going to open up a big uh, deficit in the market. And, and, and like I curate a, a book club for The Nervous Breakdown, which is an online culture magazine. And I think these book clubs, The Millions has one. Um, uh, Stephen Elliott's uh, magazine. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, You're what's blanking. It, yeah, what's it called? Uh, Anybody. What? The Rumpus, yes, The Rumpus. The Rumpus. I think they were the first one to start a book Thank club like this. But all these book clubs <laughs> are popping up everywhere. I mean, so like uh, Oprah going away sort of opens the market for a lot of young, hungry people that are willing to sort out that demand without, you know, a television camera on their side. Right, but it was really the television camera that made it possible for her to. I mean, she wouldn't be moving. Kind of, but we don't have the same tools. I mean, right. this is here we are on Scan DV. That's right. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying desperately. If I you're had to, succeeding. If I this had, is you're succeeding. This I is the point. I mean, we can't, we, you know, I mean, you, you, the gatekeepers are gone, dude. I mean, the, the newspapers are going away. I mean, there's only, you know, the daily newspapers don't do book coverage like they did even 10 years ago. So the point is, is we don't getting, I mean, look at Twitter. People are getting their news from tens of thousands of sources now instead of just one or two sources. I mean, this is how word of mouth builds. Right. I that think way you got to work multiple a little unreliable sources. Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. I love it that. It makes for a great narrative. <laughs> it really does. So, yeah. If not a truthful one, at least you have it's compelling. Sure. Yeah. What you said. That's, that's a, you know, I, I was a film critic for for a while, and I, I wanted to get out of the film critic business when I found out that people were actually listening to me. That freaked me out on some level, because <clears throat> at some point it's like form your own opinion, people. Right? Shouldn't shouldn't audiences be forming their own opinions, not listening to others? And yet mainstream fiction seems totally dependent on bestseller lists and pushing it down our throats and advertising. I well, I can tell you that, I mean, bestseller lists in, in the literary world pretty much do start from word of mouth. I mean, how are they supposed to make up their decision? How do they sort out that demand? If you walk into a big box store right. that carries, and, and, and I'm not banging on the big box stores, right. you know, but like if you walk into Barnes & Noble who has an incredibly long tail backlist, they've got all these titles, the only way you're going to be able to make up your mind of what to read is what's on the table. And that isn't really that, you know what I mean? That's co-op, but that's a lot of pay to play. And like the only way you're going to be able to sort out this demand is through word of mouth. And so I don't know how else somebody's supposed to discover a book without somebody else telling them it's good. I mean, well, you know, because, unless you, I mean, just blindfold publisher, them and spin them in circles and no, set them free in the bookstore. Because I mean, a publisher publishes a half million copies and they, and they give a whole bunch of those to the Costco's of the world. And that's what you see on that table. How else are you supposed to get the stuff on the table? How are we supposed to get Jared's book or West of Here coming out in 2011 by you out on the table? Uh, well, indie bookstores are great for that. You connect with booksellers, you know. Um, uh, booksellers are, th they're the mavens. I mean, uh, it's sad. We saw this happen with the record industry. We saw so many great, uh, great um, neighborhood record stores mm -hmm. just go under because of the, the, the industry digitizing and, like, what did we lose there? Let's not make that mistake again. We lost something really big there because, you know, I used to go into to, to my local record store and say, what do you got for me? Right. You know what I mean? Independent bookstores, ones that are well run, are still doing this. Uh, they still provide this service for people. And this is how you, and, and they're not all about pay to play. It's not, you know, water, I mean, so for Lulu, you know, for my first book, the only way I got it out there was to, to, to get on a staff picks wall or, or just to have a bookseller connect with it so much that they're like, when somebody comes up and say, I'm looking for something to read that's entertaining, it's like, it's funny, it's, here, check this out, you know? I mean, one book at a time, really. I think what I said last time, and I got a lot one. of guff was, but yeah, you got one, then you got six, pretty soon you're up to 40, you know? I mean, it's like, that's how you build. That's how it works. That's how it that's works it. from here on out. Okay. Yeah, until, you know. Recently had Rachel Flotard on, and so it's a whole thing. It's not just long tail, it's just long lifespan, because you can just keep selling Lulu as long as there is word of mouth. Is that it? Hopefully. Yeah. I, you know. And then they have to keep it in print and keep it available. Okay, stop now. Why? Because. We were hitting a sore point, aren't we? Mm, possibly. No. Come on. No. Nope. Come on. Well, it's hard. Because it is uh, a Most big publishers thing. don't push their backlist like I think they ought to. Um, I, think, I think too many 
titles are being published. And, right. and again, this all comes down to sorting out demand. How do you connect readers with, with books? And, and uh, where is, where am I supposed to be? Is that where I make the eye contact? <laughs> Look at okay. the red light up there. I want to do it like once. Somebody said, make sure you make eye contact. I want to do it at least I've, once. I've what was I twice. saying? We were talking about Lulu being Stouts. Print. Stouts. <laughs> I like a stout that's creamy but not aggressive. I don't like an aggressive. Like, remember when they had Guinness in the bottle? Too aggressive. It had that soy sauce thing going on. I don't like that. I like a creamy stout. Okay. What about digital copies of Lulu? Are they out there? Uh, as far as I know. I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't. Here, I'll bring my royalty statement. Maybe you can figure it out. I know I'm selling, I know I'm selling them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've heard that... Uh, I've heard, I don't know if I necessarily believe it, but I've heard that uh, e-books are now outselling hardcovers. I don't, know if, I, I don't know if I necessarily believe that. or, or Amazon or, put that information out there. I think you can believe that, can't you? And so that's a reliable source. And somebody tweeted it as well. Oh, several <laughs> people tweeted it. <laughs> See, it's a consensus. <laughs> so, but the few minutes we have left, tell us about some novels in addition to West of Here, some great examples of contemporary literary fiction that folks must read in the next, next six months or die. I just read Stuart O'Nan's new book, Emily Alone. It comes yes. out in April of next year. Good, so he needed gotta, to push. You Excellent. Get five months to get right. to your bookstore. Um, <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Emma Donahue's Room uh, is great. Um, it's selling great right now. So, if you know, the word's on the street about that already. I'm trying to think of some books that. Um, haven't launched yet, so that people can look out for them. Jared Middleton. Jared. <laughs> Jared. I thought Jared. he was getting his whole show. <laughs> he okay. won't get his own. Okay. Okay. But you can still help segment. him out, for goodness sake. You didn't give him a Okay, blurb. so let's talk about Dark Coast Press. Okay, thank let's you. Talk about, you, you know, right. uh, let's talk Good. about, you know, let's talk about small it. presses. I, I, All right. I have a couple friends in the studio audience here ah. who, are, who are independent publishers. Yes. Who uh, is new pretty much me. cashed in everything. Right. You know what I mean? They put everything, they, they came from back east. They wanted to start a publisher. They put all their savings together, and they're doing a really amazing job, and it is an uphill battle. Why are they doing it? Because they love what they do, and, and that's what's going to make them succeed. That and the fact that they're really smart. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Look okay. at the camera. Uh, say, say the last part again right to the camera. That, well, I think so. Because and they're really smart. Like because, that's they're, nice. because they're really smart. So you deliver it to the camera. Boom. Nicely done. Well, I am sticking with my theory that if people are not reading, they are stagnating. I don't care what they read, but literary fiction would be a good start, even if we don't have to call it that. I and do agree with you in this that I can tell, like when I meet somebody, mm -hmm. I can tell a reader from a non-reader within yeah. 10 minutes. I, I, I mean, you know, no offense to non-readers. Um, like most of my friends, God love them, stopped reading in college right. literary fiction. Maybe they read some historical or nonfiction, but like, uh, it's interesting. I can tell almost immediately when someone reads. I mean, the, the readers tend to be better conversationalists. They tend to not just uh, dialogue, but actually dialogue. Um, I don't know. You are what you eat, and I'd hate to think of what I would be right now um, if I just lived on a steady diet of Real Housewives, you know. Wow. Very nicely said, and I do like that show, but I still read. <laughs> <laughs> Women in Atlanta are hilarious. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Jonathan Everson, author of West of Here, soon to be on bestseller lists in 2011. Find any camera. There we go. West of Here. Yeah, I got to put my fingers crossed on that. that oh, you I thought you were giving me. yourself the finger. Oh, right. no. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You bet. That was really a half hour. Did we get it? You sure you don't want to shoot some more? You sure we got enough? They won't let me. Oh, they won't? I hope I gave you enough. If you end up short, you can just put a documentary clip on that. Like the bunnies or something like that. Yeah, something. No, really. We can play I want to talk about bunny land. I want to back on to that. That was really. Bunnies. Are you sure you got enough there, dude? <laughs> can we hear that? No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>